This video will be on the second key difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic gene regulation, and that is that eukaryotes tend to use very complex combinations of transcription factors um, to regulate individual genes. Um, so this is in comparison to uh, prokaryotes, which have these simple, you know, maybe one repressor, one transcriptional activator. So uh, there are three different kinds of regulatory elements that most eukaryotic genes have, and we're going to just mention these and then talk more about them. So first of all, the promoter, okay, we have talked about this already, and we're not gonna, going to go into this in more depth, but this is the Tata box. This is where TBP binds and RNA polymerase will bind, and this is right next to the place where then transcription will begin, where the plus one site. Now there's something else called the promoter proximal elements, and these are sequences that are fairly near to the promoter. And uh, there are factors, proteins, that bind to these sites and can um, assist in gene regulation. And then there are also enhancers, and enhancers are found at some distance from the uh, start of transcription. Um, and these act in the same way. They have transcriptional uh, regulators, so transcription factor proteins that bind to them and can, um, can activate, help to activate or repress transcription of that particular gene. So we'll talk about promoter proximal elements first. So promoter proximal elements are found within a short distance of the promoter of a gene, and uh, usually within several hundred bases. Um, before the Tata box or the promoter. And so there are a number of promoter proximal elements that are pretty commonly found in genes. Um, two of those common ones are shown here, a GC box and a CAT box, as they're called. Um, and to these particular sequences, proteins will bind and they can um, be important in activating transcription. And so what you can see here, um, this is just measuring the levels of transcription of this particular gene. And um, if you mutate, of course, the, the Tata box, all right, you lose transcription. But also if you mutate the CAT and the GC boxes, you also lose that um, those high levels of transcription. So most eukaryotic genes have at least some promoter proximal elements. Um, there are a number of different ones in addition to these two that I've mentioned here. Um, however, they all are defined by their proximity to the normal promoter. Enhancers, on the other hand, can be quite a distance away from the gene. And so they can be before the gene or after the gene, or they have even been found within the gene in, um, in an intron. Um, so to these particular enhancer sequences, transcriptional uh, regulators will bind, and these can help then to activate or to repress transcription of that gene. We'll talk about two specific examples of how uh, individual genes are regulated in eukaryotes. The first example will be the GAL4 system in yeast. This is a relatively simple uh, example, and it's meant to be analogous to the LAC operon in bacteria so that we can compare and contrast the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. The second example is rather complex, the human beta interferon gene. We'll talk about this in class. Uh, it won't be on this video. Both of these examples are going to illustrate um, how you know, we use transcription factors, but then how these transcription factors tie back into this whole thing of regulation of epigenetic marks uh, in histones and in, uh, methylation of the DNA. So the first example um, is the GAL system in uh, yeast. And so remember, yeast is a unicellular organism, one of the most simple eukaryotic uh, organisms. And um, the idea here is that yeast need an energy source, and their preferred energy source is glucose, right? But they can also use other sugars, for example, galactose. And so galactose needs to be converted into glucose 1-phosphate in order to be able to be used uh, in glycolysis. And there are a number of genes that are required to do this conversion. Okay, so galactose is up here, and there's a number of different uh, steps in 
the conversion of galactose into glucose 1-phosphate, these steps are catalyzed by these uh, GAL genes, such as the GAL2 gene, right, the GAL1 gene, GAL7, and GAL10 gene. Now, just like in bacteria, we want these genes only to be transcribed when galactose is present. So only when this energy source is present should we bother to make all of these proteins that are required for, uh, for the metabolism of galactose. And so the way this works is the following. So there is a transcriptional activator called GAL4, and GAL4 will bind to uh, particular enhancer elements near to these GAL genes. So these four GAL genes are similar to those structural genes in, uh, in the LAC operon, all right? Um, and so these are the ones that need to get activated. Uh, when GAL4 binds to these enhancer elements, uh, so these enhancer elements are called upstream activating sequences, okay, or UAS sequences. When GAL4 binds, then the, um, the nearby GAL gene is transcriptionally activated and, you know, gets transcribed and then translated at high levels. Just want to point out a little bit more about this particular GAL4 protein. Okay, so this is actually a dimer. There are two um, GAL4 proteins that bind together, and there are two primary, uh, very important parts to this. So one part is the DNA binding domain, and the other part is the activation domain. All right. There's also the place, of course, uh, that allows these two proteins to bind together. That would be called the dimerization domain. So here's how this works. Uh, first of all, let's keep in mind the big picture. So when we do not have galactose present, okay, that's shown on the top here, um, we don't want to transcribe the GAL genes, all right? In contrast, when gal galactose is present, we do want to transcribe the GAL genes. Now, um, the way things work is uh, a little bit more complicated than this very simple case we saw in prokaryotes where the repressor was the thing that responded to that uh, effector. So here you've got a it's much more complex situation. You've got a couple of other proteins that are very important in regulating the activity of GAL4. And all three of these proteins, so GAL4, uh, this protein GAL80, and GAL3 are always present in the cell, okay? But they will re be able to respond to the presence of galactose in the following way. So normally, um, if you don't have galactose present, we have GAL4 is present in the cell, and it will bind to that uh, enhancer. However, it is inhibited in the activation domain by another protein called GAL80. Okay, so GAL80 will just sit, has a very high affinity for that GAL4 protein, and will sit on it and prevent it from activating those nearby GAL genes. Now, the uh, protein which actually binds to galactose when galactose gets added here is this protein GAL3. Okay, so GAL3 is just hanging around doing nothing in the absence of galactose, but once galactose is present, galactose or GAL3 will bind that galactose and that changes the conformation of GAL3, and what it does is it highly increases the affinity of GAL3 for this repressor protein, GAL80, okay? And so what happens is that GAL3 now has a higher affinity for GAL80 than does GAL4, and so GAL80 gets bound to GAL3 and gets pulled off of that GAL4 transcriptional regulator or transcriptional activator. Okay, this is now free to activate those ne nearby GAL genes. 
So what does the GAL4 activation domain actually do um, in order to activate transcription? So some of this is very similar to a transcriptional activator in prokaryotes. So remember our transcriptional activator in the LAC operon was CAP and that acted to help recruit RNA polymerase to the promoter. And so GAL4 does some similar things here. So first of all, it binds to TF2D complex. Remember TF2D is one of those general transcription factors that must bind to the promoter. Um, TBP is part of the TF2D complex. And that GAL4 binds to this and helps it to bind to the promoter. Another thing that the GAL4 activation domain does is it binds to a complex of proteins called the mediator complex. Now we haven't talked about this before, but what the mediator complex does is it binds to RNA polymerase and helps, um, helps it bind onto the promoter. All right. And so those first two functions here um, are very similar to what happens in prokaryotes. We need to get all of those general transcription factors and the RNA polymerase bound to the promoter. The third thing is a little bit different, however. So the other thing that GAL4 uh, does is that it recruits the SWISNF complex to the, this chromosomal region. So SWISNF, remember, moves nucleosomes around, it remodels the nucleosomes, and it can help to move nucleosomes that are, that are sitting right on that promoter, it can move them away, allowing the binding of these general transcription factors and RNA polymerase. Now there's a completely additional way that the um, the GAL genes are regulated in addition to the GAL4 system. So just like the LAC operon, uh, when glucose is present, the cell would prefer to use glucose rather than galactose. So just like with LAC, it preferred glucose instead of lactose. Um, the way this is accomplished is via a protein called, called MIG1. Now MIG1 accumulates, come, gets higher when the glucose levels are high in the cell, and MIG1 will bind to another enhancer site called um, the MIG1 site, all right, near each of those GAL genes. When MIG1 binds to the DNA here, it will recruit a second protein called TUP1. Now TUP1 is called a co-repressor, and it has a certain enzymatic activity. It is a histone deacetylase. All right. Now if you remember, histone deacetylases remove those acetyl groups from uh, the nucleosomes, and the result of that is that the uh, chromatin is more tightly packed, um, we can't move those nucleosomes around as well, and you tend to have inactive genes in that region. All right. And so, the, um, so when glucose is high, MIG1 binds, and MIG1 can actually you know, act on those nucleosomes dominantly over the effect of GAL4. Right? And so you're going to turn off those GAL genes when MIG1 is present and uh, the, the nucleosomes become deacetylated.